Look how freaking cute. We're adding in Cetratide tomorrow. This is so weird. I can't wait to unbox these and put them in my kitchen. Should that keep me up at night at all or is that like normal? The tech only measured one. everyone this is so weird jack is not with me for today's monitoring appointments because he has a doctor's appointment of his own just an annual just a checkup this is your sign to schedule your annual if you haven't already he was really bad at going to the doctor annually ever since we graduated from college but then 2020 hit and we were like we should take our health more seriously so we go every year we go to our dentist every six months now and it's easy because once you get in there they schedule it out for you like a year in advance and six months and everything so you don't even have to think about it it's great but I'm sat here in the clinic parking lot exhausted I'm 15 minutes early because that's just how Jack's appointment like panned out with my appointment but anyway my friends let's see how many days of stims are we on right now hmm. when did I start stims? I started on the 25th, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have seven days of stims under my belt right now, and it does not feel like it. Physically, I think it actually does feel like it. I'm feeling some pressure on this side. That's a little bit of pressure on my left. My left is always slacking, as we know by now. But definitely pressure on my right, maybe, but every time I question if I feel pressure, I definitely have follicles on that side, so I'm kind of excited to see what that looks like today but as far as knowing how many days we've been on stims I feel like the first time naturally that we went through IVF and everything we were just so attentive to everything and I like had stims on my mind like all day before we would take them but even seven days into stims I still relate to the sentiment that I was saying to you guys before where it just feels like we're living our lives because it's just not on our minds like 24 seven that we're doing IVF because it's not our first time on this on this train you know so it feels really nice it feels like a balance I'll say that the headaches have started getting a little more frequent at first I could write off a single headache as you know just a single headache sometimes I have those sometimes I don't you know but I have had some sort of headache like every day the other day I woke up and it was pretty splitting but then Tylenol always fixes it so I'm really happy to have that but but they're pretty consistent I would say on this round I don't know which medication is causing it men appears the only new one but I do know that every cycle on IVF medications can be slightly different than the last one we never know so the headaches are really fun that's been really fun <laughs> my patience has not gotten better as far as emotional goes my patience is definitely not there but jack has been such a great partner he he would never let me know that my patience isn't there i just know i just can feel that i am definitely not very patient but he's been so great he's been setting his alarms for my medications like he did last time so that also helps me not have my medications like on my mind you know and whenever our fertility stuff like kicks into gear whether it was for iuis or ivf he's just been so good at picking up some house slack as well normally the routine that we go in is he cooks and I clean the dishes but I noticed that he's been doing both recently which is just so sweet and then we naturally will go back into our routine I'm sure but just picking up those little things you know and making sure there's not a lot of visual noise around the house because that can get overwhelming for me I just notice these little things that he's doing without saying anything and I think it's just the sweetest thing in the world when you like notice things that your partner is doing and they're literally not saying anything about it they're just doing it yeah I'm really grateful to have him but I'm sad he's not here today because I'm feeling some follicles and when the screen is not pointed at me 
when he's in the room, at least he can like kind of lean over and see what they're doing. So I might ask them to just like, they could point the screen a little bit towards me so that I can see it since Jack is not my second pair of eyes today. But I will let you guys know what I end up seeing in uh, today's scan and then we'll get the final results later today. So crossing our fingers that stuff is growing in there. Hi. Hi darling. Are you healthy as a horse? I'm healthy as a horse. Yay. Are you full of follow, full of molecules? I didn't ask her to like shift the thingy mabob or whatever, mm. but I like craned my neck to like see it because the girl was still training in there. Oh, nice. So I didn't want to like disturb like her Same process. As last time. Exactly. I just didn't want to like make her nervous by like shifting it away from her or whatever. They only measured one on each side. I was like, do you all only measure like the biggest one? And she was like, yes, we measure the biggest one. That's how doctor likes it, basically. Oh, nice. And so I'm like, oh, okay, like, I want to know the other ones. Because last time there was like a list of them, you know, but I, at least I got to see, instead of thinking I only had one on each side, later in the day when I see it on my chart or whatever, there's a big one on the right, but there's like two there's or, two or there's a bunch of little ones like around, but like two bigger ones than the little ones around. And then on the, on the left side, there's like three in a row. Yeah. Which is nice. Like it's doing it's something. It's doing something. Yeah, exactly. Nice. So I'm glad I saw that because otherwise I would think like, shoot, I only have one, you yeah. know? It's probably just how they like base the medications, right? Like depending if you need more or less or something. Off of the I don't know one. because if I was, if I was my doctor, I would be like, oh, is that the only significant one that that she has, they know more than I do. Mm. But like, I would be like, oh, does she have no more significant ones than that? Like we, sh there, we should definitely do something about that. And it's like, no, like there's definitely more popping up. But I also think this time with the Menopur, like um, he was getting at before, I think it's helping not having one very prominent one, if mm. that makes sense. Yeah. Like there were bigger, like she, you could tell which ones were the biggest ones on each side, but there were other sizable ones like next to it, which is super interesting. Whereas before there was like a very clear leading one on each side. Yes. So that was his goal at least, which I think is, is that's I what it's doing. It, yeah. yeah. So with the stuff that I got with my mom, again, the theme of it is to get as many plastic offenders out of the kitchen. Now, before I show you all what I ended up doing, just because I am making these small life changes, in no way am I saying you need to also make these small changes. I just love showing you guys what I'm into and my experience, but it also means that there's so much more I can do. These are just small little life changes that have been easy to digest and easy to implement instead of biting everything off all in one go. That book that I'm reading that starts with the egg has so much good information, but I have found for me that just making those small little life changes along the way is a lot less overwhelming and way more doable for the budget as well as the change in lifestyle. So I know that there's more out here. These are just the little things that I've introduced that I'm really excited about. So let's get into it because I can't wait to unbox these and put them in my kitchen. Miss Ellie <laughs> literally, literally cannot not be the center of attention. All right, as long as you don't make my camera in focus. Okay, my friends, we've got these bags here. The first one actually doesn't have anything to do with detox in the kitchen, but I noticed that we go through a ridiculous amount of paper towels and I don't want to throw anyone in this household under the bus, but I am not a massive paper towel user myself, so it really just leaves it up to one person to be going through as many paper towels as we do. So I asked that other person in this household what he uses the paper towels for, like what's the primary thing, and it's to dry his hands after he does the dishes and stuff, because we just don't have a hand towel. We've got a dish towel laying out to dry the dishes, but not really hand towels. So I got a set of hand towels from William Sonoma. We went with this green color. It's like a green sage, and it's got a bunch of different patterns. It's like the variety pack of kitchen towels. So I'll clear some space in one of the drawers to have a kitchen towel drawer so we can pull those out and use them for hands. Starting with kind of the plastic D 
detoxifying of our kitchen. So right now we have the cutting boards that you guys have seen plenty of times. They're just the set, I think we bought them at Home Goods or Amazon. And they're a set of plastic cutting boards, so you don't have to wash your wooden cutting board. And it's also not great to cut meat on a wooden cutting board, or at least like raw meat on a wooden cutting board, because it can kind of like soak in depending on the type of wood. There's a lot that goes into it. But anyway, the plastic ones are just really easy. You can pull them out, they're easy to wash, put them in the dishwasher, etc. However, if we're gonna go the non-wood route, the book recommends poly something or other as the type of plastic for cutting boards. But she also noted that cutting boards are not a massive offender in the kitchen because hot stuff is not usually on there for too long. You know, it's not sitting there soaking up the plastics and the BPAs for very long. It's not like we're storing the food in the plastic cutting board, if that makes sense. But I knew that I could do better when it came to the type of cutting board and she recommended cutting boards, like I said, that are made of the poly something or other. And so long story short, got a set of three and I actually really like how there's three different sizes, this size, this size, and this size, because right now we have three of the same big size and when I'm just cutting up a peach, I don't need to dirty a really big type of cutting board. I could probably use just like the small one, so I really liked that. So these I was really, really excited about. So right now we've got plastic utensils, but I really want to start replacing them with wooden ones that we hand wash and they don't go into the dishwasher so they'll last us a really long time. So to replace the plastic ones that we use the absolute most, I got this shallow spoon. I love that shade, that stain of wood. And then I got one for our pastas. We use that other one. We have a plastic one that has this function. So I got that one. And then mom and I sat looking up articles about silicone versus plastic as far as the toxins go. And the consensus is it's not very harmful and especially just for some flipping of steaks and stuff and our tongs are falling apart, our plastic ones that we have. These are the tongs that we went with. I'm very excited about them because look how freaking cute these look together. So pumped. And then honestly, I'm really excited about everything we got, but I think the most excited I am about something is this set of glass Tupperware. Is it called Tupperware if it's glass or is Tupperware reserved for plastic? I'm not really sure. But we have all plastic food storage and that is one of the things that she really harps on in the book because if you put warm or hot leftovers in a plastic thing and it just sits there and soaks up all the plastic and all of the toxins, that's not really that great. That's the point of Tupperware, for food to sit in it. I'm really excited. We got us started with, it's called the 10 piece set, but it's five, like they call the lids separate pieces, you know? It sounds better, I'm sure. But I got a five piece set. They've got the white lid, so I'm really excited about that. And then I know that we can always get individual Pyrex ones if we find we need a smaller one or a bigger one or need to add to our collection. I'm so pumped about that. And then on the same note of kitchen stuff and small little life changes that we've made, this one is actually a little bit more major for us than minor, but it ends up not taking up any more time, if that makes sense. But we have ended up switching over to pressed, what is this, French press, French pressed coffee. We got this ceramic French press from our wedding, it was on our registry, and it's made of ceramic, and then the filter piece is metal, stainless steel. And I'm really proud that we figured this out. It's actually so simple to make French press coffee, but one of the main offenders in our kitchens when it comes to plastics are coffee makers that have all plastic internal parts, because it's basically any plastics that touch really hot things. That's what you kind of want to look out for or replace, because that's when all the toxins come into our food and whatnot. <laughs> like for smoothies, since the smoothie cup is plastic, but the things that we put in there are cold. We're not super worried about that one and it's not on the highest priority, but the coffee maker, and we, we drink coffee like literally every day. You guys know that. It's, it's the morning thing. It's the morning thing we do. And our coffee maker over here had all plastic internal parts. And when I look at a bunch of different coffee makers, William Sonoma, we were just browsing, of course, the really pretty appliance section. Even the really nice ones that looked all metal on the outside and had a glass carafe, etc. When you looked inside, it was made of plastic, which is so interesting. So we ended up switching over to the French press, which is awesome. But the great thing about our coffee makers that we could brew a ton of coffee and store it in the fridge as cold brew for afternoon coffee. And since we can't really do that with the French press, we ended up picking up on Amazon this 
cold brew maker. And this cold brew maker, when you are brewing the cold brew, has this filter and it sticks to the lid inside and you brew it for like 12-ish, 12 hours is our sweet spot. If you want it stronger, you can brew it for more. And the coffee grounds go in here and just seep in cold water in the fridge and it makes cold brew and it's actually the most delicious cold brew we have made at home ever. It's so good. And the reason why we love this one so much is it's literally a glass carafe with a stainless steel filter. So great materials. And I think this is probably the, of my favorite lifestyle change, like the small thing that we did because it tastes so good. It's really good. Like it really did improve it's our great. coffee game and it's really, really yummy. It's really tasty. Really tasty. Yeah. We can't stop like gushing about our cold brew now. It's refreshing. It is so refreshing. And it's like you get to try different like types of like we've gone through maybe like three or four four different flavors of these. Oh yeah. Uh, we found our favorite of this and then we're like, all right, well like what other brands do you want to try? Exactly, because we used to just get whole bean coffee, but now we get ground coffee and we put it in all of the things, like the French press takes ground coffee and the other one takes yeah. ground coffee. It's really great. There's, we can grind our own coffee too, but totally. it opened the world the to huge it. huge difference between like making heated coffee and like yeah. storing it after versus just making- cold. Really steeping cold brew. Oh my God. So good. But yeah, I just wanted to share those small little changes that we've been making inside our kitchen where there's hot food touching plastic things and the little switches that we've been making. I will leave everything including the cold brew thing linked down below in case you guys want to pick any of this up for yourself. It's kind of been a slow process and I think that's why like I said before it's not super overwhelming it's just taking bits and pieces that don't feel overwhelming and implementing them as we go. Thank you just giving you a call with your results from today is that what I'll be It is yes. So based upon your testing today which all looks good your Okay, sounds good. So moving in the right direction, which is great. So what doctor wants you to do is continue on the medication, um, the Gonalep and the Metapure tonight. Okay, great. And then tomorrow night, Tuesday night, he also wants you to do the Gonalep and the Metapure at 300 units and 150 units, but we're also adding in the Cetratide. So we're adding in Cetratide tomorrow? Tomorrow night, yep. Okay, is that um, is that because the two follicles are getting big and we just want to like stop them from like releasing? It's because your estrogen has come up at 394 and we usually start progesterone if your follicle is larger than 15 millimeters or your estrogen is 500. Okay, got it. Given that your estrogen's gone up, he wants to start it tomorrow night and likely that your estrogen will be close to five, the 500. Okay, and will that, um, just remind me, that will still allow my follicles to grow over this week? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yep, it, will, it has no impact on the growth of your follicles. It just helps to ensure that the LH hormone is not released so that you're not ovulating on your own. Okay, fantastic. Thank you. And then coming back in on Thursday the 4th for your next testing appointment. Okay, perfect. Do you have a preference first thing in the morning or? Uh, just anywhere around 8 a.m. usually works. Okay, I could do 8 o'clock right on Monday. Yeah, let's do that. And for 8 a.m. on Thursday the 4th, and then I'll give you a call once we have those results. But obviously going into the weekend, you'll just want to do an inventory of medication. You'll definitely have enough of the Cetratide since you're starting that tomorrow night. Okay. But you'll just want to make sure that you still have enough of the Gonalep, enough of the Metapure to get you through the weekend depending upon, you know, when he's going to have you come back based upon Thursday's results. Okay, got you. So do you think, um, do you think I should wait until I hear what we're going to do on Thursday to order some more? I think as long as you have enough for Thursday, including Thursday night dose, that's definitely reasonable. Okay. Because then they can overnight ship it to you have for Friday night. So as long as you have enough for tonight through Thursday night, yep. I think it's reasonable to wait to know, you know, if there's going to be a dosage change, how many more nights I'll have you do it before you come back in for testing. Okay, perfect. I'll make sure I have enough there. And then um, I have just a f uh, three quick questions for you today, if you have a minute. I noticed a drop in LH from 13 to like 5. It, should that keep me up at night at all, or is that like normal? No. 
Okay. So there can be fluctuation in the LH hormone. Okay, um, great. Oftentimes, depending upon time of day or whatnot, sometimes even that to the testing have occurred, there can be a fluctuation in the LH hormone itself. Okay, great. And then um, the next one. So last time I noticed on the portal and also the ultrasound ladies were measuring multiple follicles, even though, even if there was one leading on each side. Um, but today he explained that she only measures one large, like the largest one, but that makes me think that I only have two, like one on the left and one on the right. Could you explain that to me a little bit better? So oftentimes, depending upon the text, may not even put a number or a size on a follicle that is less, less than 11 millimeters because they're so small. Okay. Sometimes it's hard to get a true dimension on them. Okay. I'm just pulling up your ultrasound results. I can look at the images specifically. Okay. Um, oftentimes what they do is if they're able to put a measurement on a follicle, then they'll do so. And then if they can at least see that you have other follicles, they may not be able to actually measure them. So oftentimes if you have multiple follicles, they'll put whether you have, um, you know, like over 10 extra follicles, if you have uh, between 2 and 7 or 2 and 5, mm -hmm. whatever the case is, They'll put just that general observation that they're seeing more follicles, but they're not necessarily able to put an actual measurement on them because okay. of the size. Okay, so great. very typical, oftentimes even when you have follicles that are less than 11 millimeters, for there not to be a true size the dominant follicle. Okay. Um, because sometimes they just can't put a measurement on it depending upon the location of the follicle and the images that they're able to get within the memory. Okay, okay, sounds but I'm good. looking at your scan here and yeah. you do have multiple follicles that I can see that are visual in your ultrasound scans. They okay. just didn't measure them all specifically. They, she just looks like measured one. Right. On each side. Okay, that makes yeah. me feel better that you can see them as well. I'm like, it's all black and white yeah. in there, but I could have sworn I saw like yeah. other <laughs> ones popping up. So I was yeah. like, am I crazy? Okay. Now my last question is in regards to um my egg retrieval, my IV specifically, because I was filling out my medical passport today or just updating it. So I am allergic to ibuprofen and I noted that last time and I made sure it says it again this time, but the anesthesiologist last time explained that I can't have any painkiller that he would normally put in there and so he instructed me to take Tylenol instead, which I did and I'll do so again this time. Um, but he yeah. also put a dash of fentanyl and everything, like in my IV, he said it was for my anxiety because I was a mess. And so <laughs> everything went so good that day. And I had little to no pain and I was really relieved by that. Basically, how do we ensure that he gives me that exact same cocktail since everything went really well last time? So it's the same, same anesthesiologist that we have throughout all of our procedures. So okay. you'll get doctors with the same anesthesiologist. I'll put a note on your, um, oh, only sc actually schedule you okay. for the procedure itself as to what you have, because we can go back and look what he gave you specifically uh, based upon your prior OR chart. So I can put a notation on there, and then he can flip back when he's vis visiting with you to what he gave you last time and be able to mimic that. Fantastic. That would be awesome. Cool. Those are all my questions, so thank you. Of course. If you have any more, you know how to reach me, so don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, but things are definitely going in the right direction. Thank you so much. Take care. All right. You you're welcome, you too, thanks. Bye-bye. Oh my gosh, it's so weird that she just called me. I'm editing a vlog of, I think it's my first official monitoring appointment. Like, not the baseline, but the first one where I've been on stimulation medications. And I also have been freaking refreshing my portal like crazy because I discovered that they post things to the portal, but they don't post everything. They just post the blood results as well as like the follicle measurements, but I don't get to see like how many small follicles or follicle like you know like just follicle details I should say they only post the blood work and then whatever follicles they measured and so I've been like waiting for her to call because I saw a drop in my LH which she said is fluctuation is normal and there's no concern and he's not concerned or anything but my heart was just like worked up I was like convincing myself that something was wrong and nothing was going right and I didn't like how the tech only measured 
One, because like I was explaining on the phone, I physically did see other follicles like attached to the big one. Like there was not like an oversized one compared to all of them. It was just like, say this was one and then there was like maybe like this on the other side. Like it's not as big as this one, but I looked back in my flow sheet from the last retrieval cycle that I had and they measured even the smaller measurable ones, the ones that you could see for sure. And I saw other ones up there that I could definitely see for sure today, but they weren't measured. And I just, I want to know all the numbers, you know? I don't want to sit here and think I only have two and think that there aren't others popping up, but I'm really happy that I get to talk to my nurse every time I go in. They asked me if I wanted a phone call every day after um, my monitoring appointments or if I just want to follow along in the portal. And even though they end up posting everything in the portal later that day regarding the medications to take, which ones to up or change or whatever, that all is in the portal for me to look at. But I love getting a phone call because questions like that pop up in my head throughout the day. So if you guys are going through this and you have a portal, that's awesome. You can also probably have somebody call you too and I, just for my anxiety and just like having that peace of mind, I know that I'll get to talk to my nurse that I've just gotten to love throughout this whole process. And I just love touching base like every day, even if I don't have questions, I just love hearing her explain things. It just makes me feel a lot better. But holy Hannah, we are starting Cetratide tomorrow. I have to look back at this clip. You guys have no idea how many times I actually look back at the footage to hear the instructions all over again. It's hysterical, I always am doing that. But Cetratide, you guys so these big measurable ones that she measured must be must be popping off kind of excited about it mm -hmm. 